they didn't want to sit on your side. I don't know why. They don't like my side. The entire, the whole front of the church changes because you're light. Amen. It's actually like you got a spotlight on you. Oh, praise God. No, it's good. It's good. Amen. The light of Jesus. Welcome to True Grace Church, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. It's so beautiful to gather together. It's so beautiful to gather in the presence of God's children, honoring the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Praise God. We, when we have a revelation of what God wants to do today for us, we are excited. Our, our hearts are leaping with joy on the inside. Our spirit is saying, yes, God, yes, God, do what you want to do. Have your way. Move in my heart. Move in my life. Move in your people. I'm going to be as excited about what you do in each and every one as I would be about myself. Amen? Yes. Amen. Because if the testimony is in you, God can, God can do it for others. God wants to do mighty miracles today. So you come expecting. Hallelujah. Church, we're awake. We're alive. We're revived. Jesus' name. We're in revival. Amen. So as you worship this morning, worship in spirit and in truth. Worship with joy. Worship with expectation. Remembering everything Jesus has done and realizing everything he's going to do. Amen. It's bigger than what we know. Let us glorify God and realize the power that lives in us is the power that holds every galaxy and universe together. That same power is in us. Worship, how freely, however freely you want to worship. Some of you like to dance. Some of you love to flag. Some of you just like to hold up your hands. Some of you like to kneel down. Some of you like to lie down. However you are led to worship, express your worship to God. Because he alone is worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Praise God.
Your deliverance here so rise up Rise up You've been delivered Rise up In your deliverance It's time to rise up been delivered delivered time to rise up time to rise out of the ashes time to rise out of depression time to rise out of the sickness time to rise out is when you can laugh with the joy of the Lord in the face of the enemy in the middle of the night in the middle of a trial because you already know that you have been given the victory let him move in you this morning and touch you in ways that you've never dreamed of 
you're his beloved. Amen. 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 Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. You know, if you're born again and the God of the universe lives inside of you, there is absolutely no reason for there to be any sadness, depression, or weird thoughts in your head. And if there are, you have the authority and the power to tell them to take a hike. Yes. Amen. Um, the arrows will never stop coming. Mm -hmm. But what you do with the arrow should change as you mature. Mm -hmm. As I grow in my identity of who I am, what power I have, what authority I have, I am going to let the monkey have less and less input into my life. Amen. I'm not going to go into depression. I'm not going to go no. into hopelessness. No. I'm not going to look like uh, my puppy dog died. I am going to be excited Glory. because I am an overcomer. Yes. Will yes. you stumble? Yes. What is the difference between somebody who stumbles and somebody who is victorious? The one who is victorious got up when they stumbled. God's mercies are once in a while? No. no never ceasing. Every day it says his mercies are renewed every day. Why? Because every day is a new day. Everything that happened yesterday is gone. You can't change it. So now we're in a new fresh day. Every day, yeah. every 24 hours, there's a new fresh start. Amen. And some of us have been living in yesteryear way too long. It's time for freedom. Amen? Amen. So I was having my little conversation with the Lord on every Monday after church. And I'm going, okay, Lord, what do you want me to teach on? What do you want me to look at? And I had nothing on Monday. Sometimes that's a little disheartening. Then I had nothing on Tuesday. That was a little buggy. And I don't think I got it until actually Thursday morning. Because Wednesday I was putting a sermon together for Pastor Kashif in Pakistan. He wanted to preach, but he wanted to preach whatever message I had. So that was kind of different. So I put together, put together a message for him to release last night. And then I came on and did ministry. Amen. Um... There was a family that brought a need to my attention last week, I believe it was. And somebody was led in the church to take care of that need. That need was sent. It was received. There's a video, but it's not going to go up on Facebook. Okay? Okay. And those involved, they know what they did. They were incredibly blown away and happy. Amen. Revival is now. What does that mean? Well, I've been around the, the schoolyard once or twice. And uh, my mother's side of the family were United Pentecostal. Lovely people, loved them. They did things different at their church. I was raised in First Church of God in San Bernardino. That's the only church I remember. Um, the Pentecostal church revival was every month. This church people came in, they got excited. That's not revival. The revival that we're looking at now 
is totally different and it encompasses more than just what we're seeing at 5F. 5F is the catalyst. It's the pointy end of the spear. It's the thing that is breaking down the wall, opening the dam, causing the floodgates to open up, whatever terminology you want to do. But it's going to touch every area of the church. <coughs> the church is comatose. How many churches are doing the work of Jesus? Really? How many churches is healing just a part of a su Sunday service? How many, uh, how many churches have you been to where deliverance is a normal thing they do on Sunday? No. I've never seen it in my life. No. I've, I've seen a lot of the make-believe where, you know, somebody comes to me and says, yeah, man, we were doing deliverance and like we prayed for this person for two days. Right. It was a lot of work. Mm. And I looked at him and I said, well, mine usually run about 30 seconds okay. or two or three minutes. So maybe we're doing something wrong or maybe we're not tapped into the truth. Maybe there's some other stuff involved. Right. So what we're going to find out in revival is the enemy has touched every area of your life. Yeah. Every area of your government's life, your schools, your hospitals, your churches are inundated with the influence of the enemy. Yeah. Does that mean we're bad? No. No. It means we've been hoodwinked by the monkey because we've been walking powerless. It's, you know, we have a car, but we don't know how to turn it on. We have a MasterCard with millions of dollars, but we don't know the PIN number to, to use it. So there's a lot of analogies. So the church is in a place right now where it's being woke up. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And the craziest part of it is we're a part of that. Never saw that coming. No. Never knew that was going to be here. So revival is now. The word revival actually means an act or an instance of reviving. The state of being revived, such as renewed attention to or interest in something. A new presentation or publication of something old. What it's not is a period of renewed religious interest. I hate the word religion. Because that's man-made. Mm. And often highly emotional evangelistic meeting or series of meetings. Emotional. You gotta emotional. Wow, wasn't that a great meeting? Oh, yeah, it was great. And they go home and everybody's still the same. Right. Nobody got healed. Nobody got set free. And in 30 days or 60 days, they have another one. So revival is restoration of force, validity, or effect. So we think of the church as being comatose. We're being shocked back to life. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. So this is just a direct definition that came out of uh, Webster's Dictionary for the word revive. What does the word revive mean? Oh, look, Billy Bob fell down and passed out. I need to revive him. Or code blue, patient's dead in room 106. We got to revive him. So the church has been dead or comatose in so many areas of what they've been doing. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I was going to go on a rampage of negativity. <clears throat> but... The Lord stopped me. Amen. So what is the mantra of the day? It's time to wake up. Mm -hmm. Woo! We have been in a spiritual stupor. Mm -hmm. Now, what makes this so interesting is, gosh, how long ago were we at the river's, the river's edge in that meeting? Ten plus. Eleven. Ten plus years ago. Eleven. Um, David Andrade, Taking Back the Valley, uh, was having a series of meetings in regards to 11, 11, 11. Mm -hmm. 
And what we were going to do, we ended up running the Rose Bowl and had 25,000 people there. I was involved with that. Um, I was a prophet that David Andrade trusted. So whenever we were at a meeting, if I had something, I just had to look at him and he gave me the mic. So we're at the River's Edge in Rancho Cucamonga, about 400 people, and I'm kind of off to the side. I'm a pacer and I don't like Facebook's camera. And I'm pacing and I'm pacing and I'm pacing and I'm moving around. I'm asking the Lord, what are we doing? What's going on? And I look back at the group of people and they're all asleep, covered with a thick spider webs. And it reminded me, if you've ever seen the Narnia series, The Down Trader, where they found all the leaders of the countries were on this island at a banquet, and they were all asleep at the banquet table, covered in spider webs. Wow. That's the vision I had. And as I'm sitting there, I go, Lord, what do I do? And he says, start praying. And as I started praying, a wind started to come in and ruffle the spider webs until they were blown away and the church woke up. That's all I saw. That's all I knew. I had no idea of this time that we're in right now. Mm. But God was already speaking mm -hmm. about a waking up of the church. A lot of times when we get a prophetic word, we don't always know in the moment what it is or what it means. The Lord reminded me last night as I was sitting down talking to people on the other side of the planet. Hmm. That just makes me just whoop, 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 you know, just, just go crazy. Mm -hmm. And a friend of ours, Mike and Carol Duhart, we went to a church in Norco, gosh, 12, 13 years ago. And we always used to go to Denny's afterwards and we're sitting down and Mike looks at me and he says, Larry, I see you standing on two continents. I says, well, what do you mean? He says, well, I see you planted in the United States, but then your other foot is on another continent. And I went, okay, Mike, love you. That's weird. Had no idea. I couldn't fathom seeing myself. I said, well, maybe I'm going to have a traveling ministry, but I didn't know. I didn't have any idea. And the Lord reminded me that last night as I'm ministering in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. 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 So the vision and the message was 13 years ago, and I'm now going, oh, yeah. that's what he was talking about. Amen. So we're right in the middle of a wake-up time Amen. that in a way I knew was coming and yeah. needed to happen. Yes. So let's look at the full <coughs> picture of what this revival is. Who was I? I have to know. <clears throat> oh, get away. I have to know who I was to totally understand who I am now. Mm. In Ephesians 2, verses 1 through 10, New American Standard, Paul is writing to the church in Ephesus, and you were dead. Yep. So you guys were all spiritually dead disconnected from God, destined to be physically dead. In your offenses and your sins, in which you previously walked according to the course of this world, mm -hmm. according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience, among them we too all previously lived... In the lust, now look at what he says. He's, he uses offenses and sin up at the beginning. Okay? But at the bottom he says, we were in the lust of our flesh. That old nature. Indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we were by nature children of wrath just as the rest. Now, the word offense is, and I looked it up, an offense and sins. Now, when you were separated in Adam, that's what the word sin means. 
If you look up the word sin, it's either an adjective, a verb, or a noun. There's three different words. If it's a noun, the very first translation of it is, I have no part of. It's used in the connotation as I have no inheritance. So I'm no longer connected to God. So when Jesus came back and had the ministry of finding out your sins, oh, he didn't have that ministry. What was his ministry? Reconciliation. Reconciliation. I'm reconciling all mankind back to God. It had nothing to do with my behavior every day. It had to do with my spiritual condition. And we have spent 2,000 years trying to fix the flesh, not realizing that in Christ I'm spiritually perfect, and when I understand that, I can then control the flesh. Amen. But what we have done is we've tried to control the flesh, thinking that would then make us righteous. And we never succeeded. No. Paul makes this weird comment. He goes, in my weakness... He is strong. Amen. So Paul is saying, I can't make me who I need to be, but when I confess, I can't do it, yeah. but I'm going to rely on you. Here you go. Now I have power. That's right. Praise God. Amen. <clears throat> when I get up in the morning, and I know all week long there have been trials and tribulations, some I overcome, some I stumble, but I got back up. I always say, thank God it's not me who's responsible for Sunday morning <laughs> or Saturday night. Amen. I am going to surrender, Lord, what is, this is my prayer time in the back. When you see me back there, what do you want me to say? Is there anything I need to know? Is there anything I need to change? This is not my message that I thought up that you guys need. This is what the Lord told me to do. So I am just the deliverer man. That's all I'm doing. So it's not because, well, you know, I was really, I was really faithful this week in obeying the Lord. No, I try to obey the Lord every, every week, every day. And I'm in the process of beating the snot out of my flesh. Paul says, I beat my flesh into submission. Oh, wow. That means there is a war between your old mind and your old nature against your spirit man. And it's not like, oh, kumbaya, we're just going to live together. The new man, no. He says, kick its butt. <laughs> Don't let it have any, any sway, any place in your life. Because the, the, the flesh is like water. It finds a crack. Oh. And it all flows in. And, you know, you had this little thing, and now all of a sudden the thing's this big, and you go, how'd that happen? The Grand Canyon didn't happen overnight. No. It started with a little trickle and just kept yeah. going, and all of a sudden there's a mile hole in the ground. Right, right. <clears throat> so the battle was with our flesh now. Hmm. So now, who am I? Paul goes on to write. Chapter four, verse 4. But God being rich in mercy. But wait, he's judging us. Mercy. No. no. Thank you, God. We have to point out everybody's fault. No. <clears throat> you ever been in that church? Yes. yes. You know how you have parents and they tell you a story that just burns into your mind? Come here, Pastor Heather. My dad's telling me a story. And he's going, watch. This is my dad. I'm going like, why are you telling me I'm like six or seven? Watch the women when they all hug each other. They're checking to see if they have corsets on. <laughs> and I'm going, what? <laughs> yeah, you're not supposed to wear a girdle in the church I grew up back in the day that I grew up. Didn't matter the spiritual condition. Where they were checking everybody to see if. They were right. How long is that dress? Do they have too much? Ma oh, good Lord. Did you see the red lipstick on that woman? Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> and so we had a church full of Pharisees yeah. judging each other. Yeah. Not mercy. And I'm looking at these Christians and they all look like lemon suckers. <laughs> oh my God. They weren't happy. 
And then you wonder why all the kids in that church, when they turned 17, 18, they were gone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Who wants to be there every day they tell you how bad you are? No, come on. So <clears throat> that wasn't God. God was rich in mercy. Yes. Because of his great love, which he loved us. Hallelujah. I was told that God is so disgusted with you, he cannot even look on sin. So if you have sin in your life, God is saying, no, I will not look at you, you filthy. Um, how many people were saved when Jesus was here? None. Were they all filthy? Yes. Were they all unsaved? No. He healed all the unsaved people. Hallelujah. For three and a half years, everything he did was to unsaved people. You filthy, dirty, disgusting. No. Love. He didn't see that. Love. So we're not to see that either. Amen. When I see somebody, I'm to look at them as God looks at them. Yes. A work in progress, a child of God, yes. the one he died for. Amen. If I look at the one that he died for and I say, I, I, what is wrong with you? Why do you do it? And I just, he didn't. He didn't. Why are we? Come on, come on. Come on. No because that's what the church has been done. So this is part of this revival. Amen. Even when we were dead in our wrongdoings, made us alive together with Christ. Yes. By grace you've been saved and raised up with him and seated and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now the apostle John writes about this in the book of Revelation when he says, as I, I believe John writes it, I believe it's in Revelation. As I, as the Father shares his throne with me, Jesus says. So Jesus is sitting on the throne with the Father. Yeah. Jesus says, I share my throne with yes. you. Yes. So there's the Father, there's Jesus, and there's us. Amen. Yes. Now I'm going to really blow your little minds. Oh. We're now a part of the Godhead. Hallelujah. Woo! Oh, you, you heresy. Well, let me see. Jesus is in the Godhead. I'm the body of Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives inside of me. Yeah, I'm in the Godhead. Amen. Eat dust, Amen. devil. Hallelujah. So, so we are raised to such an amazing level, amazing. but we're down here worrying about all this chicken feed. Oh, <laughs> When we're supposed to be up with the eagles. Amen. Now, does that mean God says, just do whatever you want? No. No, 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 no. no. He, he wants us to Hallelujah. narrow our path walking. till we're walking like he wants. Yeah. Well, that might take you a little while. All right. That's might okay. take you a little while to get free of some of the cuckoo it's nuts. Okay. Amen. It's okay. And you know some of us have had some cuckoo stuff. <laughs> <laughs> some of us have been in denial okay. mm -hmm. some of us said no get behind me woman and and they were just there for our benefit helping us <laughs> verse 7 so that in the ages to come so now he's going to tell you why he did this for in the ages to come he might show the boundless riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Hallelujah. for by grace you've been saved through faith and this is not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not a result of work so that no one can boast. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> now, what jumped out at me was that he might show the boundless riches of his grace. Who is he showing it to? Us. Us. No, no, we're already in. He's showing it to the principalities. He's showing it to somebody else. Oh, wow. Angels, dark angels fallen angels, demons. <laughs> And the people who we be who will be born after, us, after the return of Jesus. the return of Christ. That's crazy, amazing. What? You mean there's going to be oh there's yeah. going to be more people? Yeah. But they won't be the bride of Christ. A very select group. The people who get saved out of the tribulation will not be the bride of Christ. Wow. If you want to fight, just put a comment in the on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I will delete it. 
Those who get to go to the wedding are the bride. Now here's my impersonal interpretation also. Not everybody who's in the church today will go into the wedding feast. Ten virgins. The story of the ten virgins, they were in heaven. They were not they were not at the judgment of they were called a virgin. That is always somebody who has not been soiled by anybody else. They've been brand new. They were talking about Christians. Yeah. Do we have Christians today who don't have an intimate relationship with Jesus? Yes. yes. So when he says, Depart from me, I never knew you. Right. They got saved, but they never had a relationship. Mm. Wow. So now when we talk, and I, I've blown some Christians' minds, there's a hierarchy in heaven. Yeah. Of course. Yes. Now, are we all the same, saved? Yes. yes. But will there be uh, different levels and places and yes. ranks? Yes. Do you know you're going to have a uniform in heaven? <laughs> yes. It will be, there will be such a cornucopia of uniforms. Amen. Some of them will be from different cultures, but there will be some type of insignia, something on it that gives a rank in the kingdom of God's army. Now that's all secondary, but it has to do with what you're doing here on the earth. Well, you know, I got my fire insurance, I got saved, so I'm just going to live my life. You're going to be wow. one sad sucker <clears throat> on on the day you meet Jesus. And that's why it says he'll wipe, wipe away all the tears. Why will there be crying in heaven? Mm. When somebody gets in and they go, and, and let me have your little book. Jesus pulls out your book and he goes, well, this is what I had for you. And this is what you accomplished. Mm. This is all the stuff you didn't. You're here, you made it, but these were all the things I wanted you to do, but you fought me so much, oh. you rebelled against me, you wouldn't give in. When I gave you simple instructions, you got mad and left the church. Oh, Lord. <clears throat> That's what the tears are going to be about. Oh. I want to make sure I fulfill my calling. Yeah. Now, here is the great, the great, great redemption in this. <clears throat> God says in the time that you have left on this earth, I can make it so you fulfill your calling. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, but Lord, I started late. That's all right. Come on. Compress I knew time. you would. You will compress yeah, time. So I planned everything for after you gave up the donkey spirit. Woo! Ah. <laughs> 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 So now, look at verse 9. No, nope, no, nope, don't look at verse 9. Let's go to the next one. Amen. Verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ for... Wait, he has a work for you. Yes. If you're spending all your time, all your life, well, am I worthy? Am I in? Am I out? Am I okay? Hmm. You'll never do it. You'll be that man who built his house on the sand. Every time there's a way, oh, I'm out, oh, I'm in, oh, I'm out. No, I'm, I'm built on the rock. It says we have been created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand so that we may walk in them. Right. I have a job on the planet. Yes. 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 So many Christians I know, well, we're saved. And then we go do our life. Yep, you're saved, you'll go to heaven. And you will be at the back of the sanctuary. What? Yeah, there's going to be an un unnumerable place of people. What? Yeah, you'll be in, but you'll be in the cheap seats. <laughs> Ever go to a football game or a basketball game where you were so far away that you need a binoculars to see the game 
And then you said, we could have stayed home and watched the game and had a better view. <laughs> These are not to upset you. These are to shake you. Wake up. And say, Lord, I don't want to do one thing more according to what I thought you wanted me to do. I want to do everything from this moment forward because I heard you. I was given a word. I was given a direction. Not because this is the way my old church did it. This is the way my mom and dad did it. This is the way my brother does it. No, I don't Come care on. about any of that. Come on. I am in the now. Thank you, Lord. So I need to figure out what works God wants me to do. Yes, I love that. Well, the good works must line up with Jesus. Mm. <clears throat> in John 3, 17 through 18, God did not send his son into the world to judge and condemn the world. Good Lord, that is what every preacher on TV talks about. Come on. God judging the world. God's going to destroy Las Vegas. <laughs> you know, that curtain went into the Louisiana because it was horrid. There was sinners everywhere. <laughs> Katrina destroyed about 100 churches. Are you stupid? Are you really that stupid that God sent a storm to destroy Louisiana because there was so much sin. Do you see how totally evil and ignorant the devil has made some people? And there are big, giant denominations getting up and spouting that crap from their pulpit. Sorry, that's a pet peeve. But, 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 but to be savior and rescue of it. So now there's no longer any condemnation for those who believe in him. Now stop and, and do an honest assessment of yourself. How often do you walk in guilt and shame? Don't raise your hand, don't tell me. Just do an assessment. If you fight with guilt and shame, there's still a sliver of legalism in you. And you don't understand the complete work of the cross. Now when you stumble... The enemy is going to come in and beat the snot out of you. Yeah. And God just says, stand up. Amen. Do you know my washing of you happens daily, hourly, mm -hmm. moment by moment? Yes. I am washed by the blood constantly. Now the first washing made me perfectly righteous. Amen. The ongoing washing is to cover Every single boo-boo, mistake, stumbling, I do. So good. Amen. Why would you waste so one moment of energy or your time? Oh, my gosh, I can't believe I did that yesterday. Oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. Lord, forgive me, forgive me. I repent. I confess. The Lord says, get up, get over it, move on. Come on, that's right. Now, repent says, change my mind. Okay, Lord, I stumbled into this. I fell down. I did that. I know it was wrong. I've been fighting for this for years. Why? Yeah. That's your next question. Yeah. Why? Within or without. Is there a stronghold? Yeah. Is there a renewing of my mind? Hmm. Do I need to get the stick out and beat my flesh? Hmm. Is that just my flesh? Or is it a willful... I got the wrong mindset, or is there still a demonic stronghold where I can't say no? Right. Was it an arrow that hit me and I responded right, to right, it? Right, right, right. Yeah, that's exactly. Which one was it? But I'm going to do all these things in my place of righteousness. Right, yeah, right. Come on, yeah. come on, not in condemnation. I tell stories over and over because they're so good. Yeah. <laughs> Preacher's son, going to preach. 10,000 people in church. You know, I got up this morning and I prayed and I was in Christ. Kind of talk like John Wayne. <laughs> and I was driving here and somebody cut me off and I cussed them out and flipped them off and I was out of Christ. <clears throat> I repented and I prayed and asked for forgiveness and I was back in Christ. And then I came into the church parking lot and somebody was parking in my parking spot 
and I flipped them off and I cussed them out and I was out of Christ. And then I repented and fell on my knees in my office. I was back in Christ and now I'm here to preach this morning. Wow. And I'm going, you're nuts. And that's a true story. I heard the man say it from the pulpit. And I say, you are squirrely. I don't want to hear anything that comes out of your pie hole. I am sealed with the Holy Spirit. I can't get away from him. If I run and hide in the corner, God's over there going, what are we doing? <laughs> if I leave the church and go out in the desert and cry, he's going, what are we doing out here? Because he's with me. He's attached to me. We're attached at the hip. I can't get away from him. When your eyes are open, you start seeing some ludicrous <laughs> insanity coming from the pulpit. From the I'm not mad at them. I just pray their eyes are open. Yeah. Because yeah. they're leading their whole church down into such a pit of the disappointment and despair. There's no longer any condemnation for those who believe in him. Amen. But the unbeliever already lives under condemnation because they don't believe. Because they don't believe. So when Jesus comes, this is, the, this is the, the whole judgment. Do you believe the one I sent or you don't believe the one I sent? No. Nobody's going to hell for sleeping around, smoking, doing doobies in high school behind the gym. It's none of it's based on your behavior. So if your behavior is not used to judge you to be saved or unsaved, once you're born again and it says that old man is dead, leave the old man in the grave and don't live in your past. Don't live under guilt. Don't let the enemy beat you up with what you used to do or used to be. Right. Right. I'm preaching so good, breakfast just came. Uh, <laughs> sorry, egg omelet, Martha Greens. <laughs> I don't hide anything. I hate phony preachers. I hate the guys who get up in a suit and act one way and after church they're totally a different person. Yeah. I am what I am and whatever you see is what I am. Yeah. Now, now my beautiful Heather will be over there going, oh dear Lord, oh dear Lord, oh dear Lord, oh dear Lord. Are you sure this was the man? Yes, amen. And the answer is yes. 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 This is your cross to bear. No. <laughs> so I am part of the new revival is I am not to preach guilt or shame or the law. That's Amen. right. Yes. Thank you. That's right. We are dead to the law. The law is not part of my life. No. Man. I'm looking out, out into the sanctuary and there's a whole family of Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Cub Scouts. And I was just sitting back in the back thinking about you know, I was a, I was a Cub Scout and I was a Boy Scout, and to show you how dysfunctional our family was, my dad used to be an assistant uh, Boy Scout leader. I mean, I remember we had three copies of the Boy the Boy Scout handbook. My two older brothers were in it, so when I was in it, we're going to go on a, a day camping trip, and they just sent me out the door. So when we get to Joshua Tree, where we're going to camp for the day, they cooked food, and we were all supposed to come up with our little Boy Scout utensils. Mom and Dad didn't give me any. So I'm sitting there, everybody else is eating, and I'm going like, well, do you have any plates or forks? Well, where's your kit? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. <laughs> so I sat and watched all them eat, and we did activities all day long, and I went home. Oh. I go, what the heck? Dad, what were you doing? I don't know. <laughs> you sound like Homer Simpson. <laughs> uh, God's going to show us his way of doing things. In John 8, 10 through 11, until finally Jesus was alone with the woman caught in adultery, and the woman was still standing there before him, so he stood up and said to her, Dear woman, where are your accusers? 
Is there no one here to condemn you? Looking around, she replied, I see no one, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus said, then I certainly don't condemn you. Either go and from now on be free from a life of sin. Yeah. A couple of interesting things in that scripture. Who is the woman? That's us. It's the church. It's his future church. He says, you guys have been looking for me. And instead, you've been looking for love in all the wrong places. The word Lord in that sentence, in Arabic, Aramaic, and there was a lot of the New Testament was written in Greek and Aramaic. Yes. The Aramaic word is very distinct. It means a title for God. She knew who he was. So when she looked at Jesus she and said, Lord, there are no buddy here to condemn me, she was saved. Yeah. She was given the gift of righteousness. Right. So he says, from now on, be free from the, the, the life of separation. That's right. That's right. That's what it means. If God was so hell-bent on condemning us, he would have stoned her. Jesus would have stoned this woman right there and then. He had right. Every right. Which still happens around the world by the Muslims. Yeah. Because they've incorporated about 60% of the Old Testament into the Quran. And so they, they throw people off of buildings. They stone people. They cut people's heads off. But here the one who wrote the perfect law yep. says, I'm not going to condemn you. Thank no. you, Jesus. So why would we why would we condemn anybody? Restore them. Yes. That is the height of adultery. Restore so them. Come on. we should be preaching. Let me introduce you to your husband. Woo! Now for men, this is kind of weird. We got we got to kind of do a, a dynamic change in that relationship there, but it's the terminology. We are going to be permanently connected to Jesus. Amen. Not in a sexual way, but in a relationship way. Amen. Like a husband and wife. Who knows more about me than Jesus? I mean, other than Jesus, who knows more about me than anybody on the planet? Heather Rochelle. Heather Rochelle. Heather Rochelle. Heather's the only one who knows that every time I call her, I sing to her. Aww. And I don't sing in public. Aww. Every since my voice changed, it, it will sound like Mickey Mouse. Aww. I don't know the nasal thing. <laughs> oh, boys are great. Just Mickey. <laughs> but she knows me. And I'm so excited to talk to my wife. I sing to her. And so sometimes she has to say, Larry, the grandkids are here. You're on speakerphone. Oh, okay. Let me change the song to G-rated. But see, there's a relationship that is intimate on all levels. And that's the relationship you have with Jesus. And he's made a lifelong, forever commitment to you. Eternity. And when we embrace that, it will permeate every area of our life. Amen? Amen. So good. John 4. Jesus replied, if you only knew who I am and the gift that God wants to give you, you would ask me for a drink. And I would give you living water. The woman replied, but sir... You don't even have a bucket, and the well is very deep. So where do you find this living water? Do you really think that you are greater than our ancestor Jacob, who dug this well and drank from it himself, along with his children and livestock? Jesus answered, if you drink from Jacob's well, you'll be thirsty again. But if anybody drinks the living water I give them, they will never be thirsty again. For when you drink the water I give you, it will become a gushing fountain of the Holy Spirit, flooding you with in, uh, endless life. Amen. Now, Jesus, this was a very interesting story. Jesus and the apostles were going this way. And the Holy Spirit said, I want you to go to Samaria. Yeah. Samaria were... A, a, a group of, some of them were Jews who stayed on the other side of the Jordan. 
Some of them were Jews who married un-Jews. Gentiles. And they were Gentile mixed. And so the Jews in Jerusalem shunned them. But God said, I want you to go to them. So the whole concept that Jesus was only going to minister to the Jews and the rest of the world just had to suck it up? No. He was sent to the Jews, but he also got in some un-Jewish people. The, some, the uh, centurion. The lady whose daughter was demon-oppressed and she was a Neo Syrophoenician, woman. Syrophoenician woman. So God's heart was for everybody. Amen. His assignment was to go to the Jews first yes. so that they could be saved and then they were supposed to go out and save the world. Yes. Amen. So Jesus said to her, go ahead and bring your husband. And, and she goes, well, 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 well I, I have no husband. He goes, yeah, and the one you're with now is not your husband either. So what was she doing? She was looking for love in all the wrong places. So this is another paraphrase of the church looking for the Savior and looking in all the wrong places. If, if I was going to go where I wanted to go, I would rip apart so many denominations this morning that are pure demonic not the people the organization what they're teaching lord says you don't need to do it but if your whole church thinks that peter is the first pope peter was never the pope he was not the leader of the church in jerusalem james was Paul wrote most of the New Testament. Do you know what the word Pope means? Father. So they're believing Peter was the father of the church. Jesus is the father of the church. So they refer to this man who wears a dress as Holy Father. So the man in the dress is the one who's supposed to tell six and a half million people what to do. Do you think there's some deception? Yes. I have nothing against those sitting in the pews, but the hierarchy is so dark on what they teach. So, sorry, Lord, I'll stop. <clears throat> so the church has had many husbands. It's time that we introduce them to the true husband. In John 4, verse 21, Believe me, dear woman, the time of this is a continuation. Now, this is... Uh, now, this is a continuation. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when we will, uh, when you will worship the Father neither on a mountain nor in Jerusalem, but in your heart. Because she was saying, we here, we worship on the mountain, but you in Jerusalem worship in the temple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, "There's a, and then why, the Jews don't get this. Why they don't get it? A time is coming when you will neither worship on the mountain or in Jerusalem, but you'll worship the Lord in your heart. Amen. The heart always refers to what you believe. Amen. You're going to worship through your belief. Believe on the one that I sent. Your people don't really know the one they worship. But we Jews worship out of our experience. For it's from the Jews that salvation is available. From now on, worship. From now on, worshiping the Father will not be a matter of the right place, but with a right heart. Jesus was coming to undo pagan and undo Judaism. Think about that. He's going to undo Judaism, and they wouldn't let go of that stinking temple, so he destroyed it in 70 A.D. Now, I, I'm saying some harsh things, but I want you to get a revelation. Christians who have big ministries, oh, you know, I went to Jerusalem. It was great. I went to the Wailing Wall and I put my head up against the wall and I just cried and felt such a God presence. God hasn't been there since 400 years before Jesus came. Why are you crying at a wall? That was the old temple that was destroyed. And we get goose pimples. We go, oh, I was in Jerusalem. Yeah, is it an amazing place? Yeah. Did Jesus do a bunch of amazing things? Yes. 
But don't run out and buy your prayer shawl. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. But we did that. I wanted to order one. Now the Lord told me to order a shofar. That was different. That wasn't the law. Your prayer shawl, everything about the prayer shawl represents the law. The colors, the lines, the threads, the knots. All the knots represent the 664 laws. The color, everything is, is about the law. I don't want anything to do with that. So this is part of the revival. In Matthew 4, 23 through 24, Jesus ministered from place to place throughout all the province of Galilee. He taught. So teaching is part of the ministry. In synagogues, preaching the wonderful news that he's condemning the living daylights out of you. What did he teach? He taught about kingdom authority. Amen. Yes. And we never teach about that in the church up until recently. That's true. Think about the church you went to as a child. They always told you every Sunday you need to confess your sins. You need to work harder, jump higher, run faster, give more money to the church. Right. You need to examine yourself before you take communion and confess all your sins. Mm -hmm. yeah. Communion washed you clean. Yeah. Why are you confessing sins before you take communion? Come on. That is retarded. So even doing communion, they had no idea. Every time we had communion, the church I came out of, okay, bow your head. I want everybody to search your heart and see if you're worthy of taking communion. Mm -hmm. What? Communion represents the very thing that made me worthy. But somehow I need to do something to be worthy to take communion. He taught about the kingdom and healing every kind of disease and sickness. So the kingdom was tied to disease and sickness. He came in and said, I am bringing you authority to tear down demonic strongholds. To undo the work of the devil. Heal people. Set them free. That's the kingdom principle. You now have authority as a believer to come against the works of the enemy. Praise Amen. God. Amen. He healed every kind of sickness and disease among the people. His fame spread throughout all Syria. Many people who were in pain and suffered with every kind of illness were brought to Jesus for their healing. Now I'm going to go off on a little subject here. He told me to. He said I could talk about this one. It says, he, uh, he, they were brought for their healing. Epileptics, paralyg para paralytics, and those tormented by demon powers were all set free. Everyone who was brought to Jesus was healed. Everybody. Amen, everyone. Now I'm looking at epileptic. Mm -hmm. Epilepsy. Mm -hmm. And the, the word there is moonstruck. And it's used two times in the Bible. Hmm. And I'm going, okay. What does the moon have anything to do? That's where they get lunacy from. Right. Yeah. Luna yeah. C. Yeah. A lunatic. Yeah. So Luna is tied to the moon. It's it's used twice, and both times it was in the Bible. It re, it relied it related to somebody who was under demonic influence. And I'm saying, Lord, what, 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 what are you trying to say? He says, does the moon have any light? No. Oh, the moon has no light. So the light that the moon does have is reflecting from the true light, the sun. Amen. And I'm going, are you kidding? He says, angel of light. That's what it represents. It's, a, it's somebody who is under the delusion of the angel of light. And I went, holy potato chips. Wow. That's all the devil has. Right. That's what it meant. That's good. 
And that's who Abraham worshipped, was the moon. Now, where Abraham's family all worshipped the moon. Mm -hmm. They were worshipping a false light. Right. Wow. 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 Come on. Wow. Wow. Good word. Heather taught on dreams and fantasy life the other night. Great, yeah. great teaching. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Serious. Excellent. Every time I've had to come to somebody and say that's not from God, you know who got in trouble? Me. Mm -hmm. They got mad at me. Oh. That dream is not from God. That vision is not from God. That's the devil giving you stuff to keep you in a circle of chasing your tail. Moonstruck. If you if you have a dream from the Lord and your life doesn't change or the or you can't translate the dream any vision I've had, I know exactly what it means. I didn't have to go to anybody and say, hey, you know, I saw this, I was doing this, and then I didn't have to do that. Every vision I've had, 99% of them had to do with the people. We're in Corona at a church service, and uh, the prophet was in South America. And he called and said, I want the church to pray. We, the witch doctors, are planning to kill us tonight. And so we went into prayer. Yeah. And I had a vision that a spear, a giant spear came out of Norco and flew out of our church all the way to South America and hit this demonic entity that had a power down there and it pierced his armor. Amen. And this green goo started coming out. And he was dying. He was losing his power. And I'm sitting there going, okay, Lord, what does that mean? He says, Ken Peters is the head of the spear. They're down there doing the work. Your prayers are the shaft Amen. that caused it to pierce the armor of the Hallelujah. enemy. Hallelujah. So when I got up and talked to his wife who was here, I said, I got a vision, and this is what the Lord said. She goes, release it to the church. Mm. So there was no, I didn't go home and write in the book and say, I wonder what that means. God doesn't tease you. Yeah. He doesn't give you words to make you running around in a circle. When I give you a word, is it a put down? No. It's usually an encouragement yes. of some, some, something to do with how God sees you, contrary to how you see yourself or the world sees you. Mm -hmm. right? right? Or we tell them that you're, they're going to have a baby next year. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a girl before you know it's going to be a girl. Hallelujah. Right. Yeah. So if you're having stuff run around in your head and you don't know what it means, take it right out and throw it in the garbage can. <laughs> because if you have something from God, you're going to wake up and go, oh, the Lord just told me this. He will, interpret yeah. it. He will give you an answer. Amen. Different subject. So that was what Moonstruck was. That's amazing. And I was just like, wow, I've yeah. never heard that. That's good. How do we build the church, Lord? In verse 25, this resulted in massive crowds of people following him, hmm. including people from Galilee, Jerusalem, and the land of Judah, the region of the ten cities known as that, that, and that. So how do we build the church? Let the power of God flow, and people will come to the power. Woo! I don't have to do a letter campaign or a door-to-door -door campaign. Yeah. Let the power of God flow and they will come. I almost nosedive right there. <sighs> Dude, you ever get excited and you just don't know what to do yourself? You just kind of like, ah, I don't know if I should run around or sit down or what I'm supposed to do here. I'm feeling that run around anointing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew 8, 14 to 17. Then Jesus entered Peter's house and found Peter's mother in law bedridden, severely ill with a fever. Now, this was really interesting. The moment Jesus touched her, her hand, she was healed. 
Yeah. Immediately she got up and began to make dinner for them. That evening the people brought to him everyone who was demonized. Demonized. Mm. And by Jesus only speaking a word of healing over them, they were totally set free from that moment. Mm. And everyone who was sick received their healing. In doing this, Jesus fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. He put upon himself our weakness and he carried away our diseases and made us well. Amen. Thank you. Now, he touched her. That's the story in Matthew, the story in Mark. But in the story in Luke, in the name of Jesus, come out of that woman. He rebuked the spirit and it came out. So now we either see that he put a hand on her and spoke to her, or according to Luke, he just spoke to her. But they say that you'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Sometimes I feel really led to put a hand on your head. Sometimes, I'll, like if you're a woman, I'll have another woman come over and put their hand on your tummy. I'll touch their hand and I'm just releasing something in there. Other times I stand back here and I just speak to you and go, okay, get out of here. Demons go. And I don't have to. So it's whatever the Spirit of God leads me to do. There's no formula. Well, you need to come to the front. We're going to call the elders up. We're going to dip oil on you. And we're all going to hope you get healed. Sorry. That's how you build it. Jesus healed them by a word and the power of God. Amen. Matthew 9, 32 through 34. While they were leaving, some people brought before Jesus a demonized man who couldn't speak. Now, the first time I saw somebody who couldn't speak, it blew me away. Mm -hmm. um, in, a, in a nice way. Mm -hmm. I'm getting very airheaded right now. And very hot. Is it warm in here? Yes. I am about 102 degrees. And I know it's not the room. <sighs> I had a man come up. He wanted deliverance. And he was tormented by not being saved. He was convinced he was not saved. And I said, if you're not saved, you can't say the name of Jesus or you can't say Jesus is Lord. I said to the man, I said, just say Jesus is Lord. He went. Couldn't talk. Now, I see a lot of stuff. I have a lot of visions where I look at you. Sometimes I see a crab on your back, a sucker fish, a monkey on you. The Lord gives me some type of a typology of the critter that's attacking you. And on this man, I saw a little monkey grabbing his jaws. And I just put my hand on his jaw and I said, in the name of Jesus, be free. And he said, Jesus is Lord. Amen. But it looked like to him he had just ran a marathon. He was out of breath. He was tired. Had the same thing happen to a lady. She came up and she was going to try to talk. Commanded that spirit to come off and she was able to talk. Jesus cast the demon out of him, and immediately the man began to speak, speak plainly. The crowds marveled and astonished, saying, Who's ever seen? We've never seen the miracles like this in Israel. Wow, until Jesus came, they had not been seeing miracles <coughs> in Israel. The Holy Spirit left the temple of God 400 years before Christ. So all those times the high priests were going to the temple and doing the, the sacrificial lamb and throwing blood on the mercy seat, God wasn't there. God had already left. And the people didn't know it. The people, this is the problem. The people are going to church this morning and they don't even know that the presence of God is nowhere there. There's no anointing on the preaching. There's no anointing on the organization. But they're all there excited and jumping around. And they don't know the presence of God has left. Look at this. They all said, wow, we've never seen miracles like this in Israel. <clears throat> now these are the religious people. Verse 34. But the Pharisees kept saying, the chief of demons is helping him drive out demons. Mm -hmm. Do you know who gives us the most flack for what we're doing? 
Religious. Church. Religious people. Our family. Our relatives. Our friends on Facebook are rebuking us. <laughs> it's okay. Keep on going. Don't get there. <clears throat> I had a... I follow some relatives who are in the Pentecostal church. And on my cousin's page, a lady came on and said, I've just been diagnosed with fourth stage cancer. They're saying it's incurable, blah, blah, blah. And people going, okay, we're praying for you, sister. Oh, yeah, we're, we're praying. I said, well, that's junk. So I went on and on. I gave an answer and I said, you know, most sickness is always tied to the demonic presence. I'm going to command these spirits of cancer to come off of you and I'm going to release healing into you. And so I prayed for her. She sent me a big old long private message. I am the righteousness of God. There's nothing evil in me. Oh. How dare you? Oh. I deleted your post. I am going to go to my Christian friends and they're going to pray for me and we're going to go to the doctor and follow the doctor's prescription. Don't ever reach out to me again. Oh. I'm going like, holy crud. Oh. She just went spazzo because in her mind, if she had a demon, there was something unrighteous about her because they were under the delusion that nothing unrighteous can live on me then how come you're sick come on why are you sick come on if you are so pure and holy why are you sick come on, come is sickness from god no. No. no but that religious thing that religious thing goes nuts a Christian can't have a demon. Unrighteous cannot live with righteous. Nowhere in the Bible does it say unrighteous cannot live with righteous. Paul says, what place does righteousness have with unrighteousness? He's talking about either your spouse or somebody you want to marry or who you're hanging out with and what club you're going to. Yeah. We need to have our eyes open. We need to have LASIK surgery on our spiritual eyeballs yes. so that we can see the truth. Yes. If things I say immediately offend you, I guarantee you I'm hitting a religious spirit. Come on. Good. Tear down all religion. I'm going to go through a quick litany, and I'm sure that people will get upset. Water baptism. Unbiblical. Mm -hmm. Period. You're supposed to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. I'm going to fast and be closer to God. I'm doing the Daniel fast. And I'm going to hear from God. <laughs> now, here, here's what a fasting looks like in a New Testament Christian. You know what? I'm going to turn the TV and the radio off and put the Facebook down. And I'm going to spend a couple hours with God and I want to hear. That's yeah. great. Yeah. That's wonderful. But you think you're going to deny and not eat today that somehow God's going to be pleased and answer your prayer? You're crazy. We're supposed to get them saved. That's day one. Hallelujah, they got saved. Everybody in heaven's rejoicing. Now what do you do? You got to train them up. We get them saved and we leave them wandering around like lost sheep. Bah, what do I do now? <laughs> and the enemy just comes along and beats the snot out of them. Yeah. That's true. The divorce rate in the Christian church is over 50%. Wow, that Christianity is really working for you. <laughs> Pastors are secret alcoholics and they're bebopping different people in the church. They're going to hotel rooms with women who are not their <laughs> wives. Come on. There's an epidemic of failure in the church because they've taken all the power away. I don't want to condemn the people. I want to see the people set free. Amen. I don't even want to condemn the pastors because they had no idea how to get free of all this. Yeah. I want to condemn the organization. The organization should be torn down. If they do not allow the Holy Spirit in to come in and realign it, it should be torn down. 
and religious people go crazy about that. Power did not come into my life truly until deliverance came. I had deliverance and I could see and understand. And then where did I go? I went down to Apostle Catherine and I said, look, I've cast a few demons out, but I ain't doing nothing like you're doing. So there's something you're doing that I ain't doing. There's something you got that I don't have. And so when she came up to me, we'd already talked to John Paul. And I said, I want to be, I want to be, a, have an impartation. So she found me in a break of the service and said, uh, you know, you want an impartation? I said, I want everything. I got a dab, but I want everything. I'll take everything you got. And I just said, give it to me, girl. And I felt it. I literally felt the impartation come in and hit me right in the head. And everything started to increase from that moment. Now, what if I was religious? Well, you know, Apostle Catherine, I was called out as an apostle 12 years ago. <clears throat> Sorry. Sorry, I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm just moving. I have stage directors that I have to follow. Now, is it true that I was called out as an apostle long before she was? But I don't have, I don't have the, the, the results that she has. So she must have something that maybe I need to get a little bit of. Amen. But Larry, you've been a prophet for 12, 13 years. Yeah. Still got all kinds of junk in my life. Because we didn't have that power, that anointing was not on me and Heather at that time. Did we have success in some prayers of healing? Yes, we did. We had prayers of faith. People were happening. People, things were happening. Heather prayed over her daughters when they were little girls that their teeth would be straight. These babies of hers have perfect teeth. And I'm thinking, that's going to cost me $10,000 to get that smile. So there was prayers of faith that was working, but there was this additional anointing that God was releasing, and he did it through Apostle Catherine. So I had to humble myself, go down to a girl who is younger and bubbly and say, would you be so kind as to release that anointing on me as God leads you? And I got it. Amen. See, the Pharisees, instead of going to Jesus, I mean, we want what you have. Going, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I want to be able to do what you're doing. They said, let's kill him. <laughs> Think about that. That's right. Your response, people have left this church way back in the day. And they, 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 their mission was to destroy the church. They got offended because we didn't love them anymore. Whatever nonsense the devil came into. And they gathered with everybody in the church and said, we need to all leave the church. We need to destroy them. Oh. Like, wow. You can't destroy what God builds. Amen. Have we weathered some storms? And who has the storm been? You! The people sitting in the chairs! <laughs> Not you guys. You guys are, you're, you're like the A-team now. <laughs> the other ones couldn't stand the fire in the kitchen. And they ran away. I love them. I want them to come back. But they better come back with a humbleness and say, you know what? I got monkeys on me. I need some, I need some healing. Yeah. I'm all excited. Hallelujah. So religion people are always going to say what you're doing is demonic. Right. In John 21, 15, 17, Jesus is having a conversation with Peter. Now remember, Peter was the one who rejected Jesus. So in verse 15, after they had had breakfast, now I believe this was when they were in the boat, they came out of the boat and Jesus had a fire and he cooked them breakfast. So they're out in their boat. They, Jesus has died, went to the cross. They've all went back to fishing and they weren't catching anything. And again, Jesus told them to cast the net on the other side and they had a boatload of fish. And, and Peter finally goes, who is that? And John said, it's the Lord. And Peter just jumped in the water and swam to shore. 
But when he got to shore, Jesus was there. There was fish being cooked and there was bread baked. Now me, I'd go like, where's the oven? Where's the Uber driver? Postmates hasn't come. How did Jesus get this food here? Oh, God just made it happen. So they're, they're done eating and Jesus says to Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you burn with love? For me more than these, he pointed to the fish. Jesus is uh, Peter's livelihood, his old life. Peter answered, yes, Lord, you know that I have great affection for you. Jesus said, then take care of my lambs. Amen. Amen. Jesus re re repeated the question the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you burn with love for me? Peter said, yes, Lord, you know that I have great affection for you. Then take care of my sheep. Then Jesus asked him again, Peter, son of Jonah, do you have great aff uh, affection for me? Peter was saddened by being asked this third time. He said, my Lord, you know everything. You know that I burn with love for you. Jesus replied, then feed my lambs. Amen. Glory. So our ministry is to feed the sheep. That's right. Not beat the sheep. Right. Right. Come on. There's a, a, a big denomination whose leader came up with this theology that he that he he puts out there. You know, sometimes the shepherd breaks the feet of the lamb and then carries the lamb on his neck so it will learn to trust the shepherd. What? what? That's weird. And they literally teach it at his mega church. Sometimes God will break your legs so you'll trust him. I'm not saying the man is demonic, but what's coming out of his pie hole is. That is from the pit of hell. Jesus came and healed everybody of sickness, but now we're going to teach people that they need to have sickness on them. It's everywhere. A famous nun who's worked in India who got a Nobel Peace Prize, worked with all the people being suffering and sickness. They said she was the meanest woman in the planet. No. She told them, "You, it's good that you suffer. Good. I'm not doing names oh. today. She told them, it's good that you suffer. Yet she got diagnosed with a heart problem. She flew right back to Rome and went to the most uh, expensive hospital to get her physical condition taken care of. Tell me where in the Bible does it say that God wants you to suffer to learn something? He says the enemy will put something on you and God might use that to teach you something, open your eyes to something, but God is never going to put a sickness on you. When my brother came down with juvenile diabetes and went into a coma and they said he was going to die, a woman from the church came and told my mother, God's trying to teach you something. Oh. There is so much caca that we have to let go of and embrace the new. God told Peter, feed my sheep. Amen. Give them food. Give them living water. Yes. Teach them the truth. Give them their new identity. Hold them when they're stumbling. Lift them up when they fall back down. Amen. Encourage them in every area of their life. Amen. He never said beat them. So the shepherd... is watching over his flock. That's right. My job and Pastor Heather's job is to watch over you. Thank you. Do you know what the stick with the little curly curve on the end of it is for? What it was for? What it's for? Sheep are dumb. If you know <laughs> sheep in the natural, they're dumb critters. They fall in the pits and the wells, in the ditches, and the shepherd goes over and usually a true shepherd, is, it's got a hook about that big. They reach down and grab the sheep around the neck and pull them out of the ditch. Right. And then they use a stick to beat off the devil. Amen. I mean the wolves. Yeah. We're to pull you out of a ditch and we're to beat back the enemy. That's what a, that's what a true shepherd is. So if you're not getting that at your church, time to move. Just saying. 
1 Corinthians chapter 2. The apostle of apostles. The one who had such revelations from heaven that he was not allowed to give them out at this time. He wrote, My brothers and my sisters, when I first came to proclaim to you the secrets of God, I refused to come as an expert, trying to impress you with my elegant speech and lofty wisdom. For while I was with you, I was determined to be consumed with one topic, Jesus and him crucified. Why? Why is that so important? All your sins, all your iniquities, all your separations were taken from you at the cross. You have none left. There is no iniquity left in you. It's gone. Now pass that. I'm giving you authority. Jesus had all authority in heaven and earth. It's been given to me, and I give it to you. We as a body, the church body, should have the entire spectrum of Jesus' power. And if we don't have it yet, then we need to grow. I need to grow. But if I don't know what the cross means, I'm not... Don't go in, I'm going to become a street evangelist. No! You better learn who you are first. Get a revelation of who you are. Get all the monkeys out of your life. Now, do you have to be perfect? No, because I'm a living example of unperfect in ministry. <clears throat> I have grown so much in the last 12 years from when I started the church. So much so that the first five, six, seven, eight, nine years of messages, we, we deleted them off Facebook. Wow. Because we were constantly getting new revelation, new revelation, new revelation. And then two and a half years ago, uh, everything just went crazy. Hallelujah. We got a little minds blown. Boop. I am more free today than I've ever been free. Hallelujah. Now, am I still a little... <laughs> earthy in some areas, yeah, I probably don't deliver everything as elegantly as I could. I'm growing. But I tell you the truth. I do not want to sugarcoat anything. I don't want to keep anything from you. I don't want to lie to you. If you're in bondage, I'm going to come to you and say you're in bondage. But I'm going to try and say it in a way that's palatable. If you don't like it, it's not my fault. It's you've been believing a lie. Would you rather stay in the lie and keep circling around the toilet until you go down the drain, or would you rather have somebody come and say, yo, wake up? Yo, Do you know how many times Heather had to say, yo, Larry, let me show you, brother. You, you, got, you got some poop on the back of your shoe, and it stinks. You need to clean off your shoe. There's nothing wrong with me. You're just me. You're just always picking on me. I, oh, my Lord. Do you think she had to take a lot of pushback from me? Yeah. I am amazed that the woman is still here. Hallelujah. Because I had such strongholds when she said, Larry, you are deceived. No, it's you. And I swear I prayed, Lord, open her eyes. Do something with that woman. I think God had many, many times in the throne room, he just laughed at me. <laughs> he said, you silly goofball. I sent Heather to help deliver you from the monkey. feel <laughs> good. Back in the day, if she told me I shouldn't be eating A, B, C, or D, ah, you're just legalistic. Who was talking? A demon. A demon. But I had to let go of it. And some of these suckers I held on like a man to a rope in the middle of the ocean. No. But it was for my best life that I started letting go of stuff. I will never be able to pay back Heather for what she's done for me. 
If I rub her feet for the next 50 years, it won't be enough. I don't know how many pastors can get up and say that because they're so stinking prideful yeah. and religious. Women should be quiet in church. Stand behind me, woman. I am the anointed vessel. <laughs> Do you know I couldn't handle listening to her preach in the beginning? I fell asleep. Not until I got the demons cast off of me can I come sit in the back and go, wow, that's good. Yeah. That was really good. Yeah. And I listened to the whole thing. Now, when you see me get up and leave, as I go in my office, I turn it on so I can see your faces. Because when you come up and she's ministering, the camera is right in your face. And I want to see your face because we work as a team. And if I see something, I go, oh, Heather, I see that. And then a few seconds later, she'll address it. But there have been a couple times she's come up and told me things and I've come up and told her things. So I'm, I am very much involved with deliverance up here on Wednesday night. I am watching it. Because the minute we get in the car, or she gets in the car, and I call her, Wow, did you see what happened to Sister So-and-so? Did you see that guy? He flopped right on the floor like a fish, man. God was all over him. When God sends you to somebody, and they're trying to help you, quit kicking. Quit saying, I'm going to do it my way. Well, this is the way we did it at the other church. I don't care. Go back to the other church. I really don't care. I do care, but I don't. I'm not in a, I'm not in a personality contest. I'm here to tell you the truth and to love on you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now, have I ever come up and say something to you that offended you? Oh, yeah, pretty much every week I can offend somebody. Did I do it out of malice? No. No. Sometimes I'm a bull in a china shop when I need to be delicate, like a feather. I don't have any feathers. I only have clubs. <clears throat> Would you rather have somebody with a club fighting for you or somebody with a dusting rag? A club. 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 I'm going to come in. I'm going to knock that lion demon off of you. Bam. Okay? So the revival is all of what Jesus came to do. Revival is the whole gamut of the church from top to bottom. It's not just one thing. God is so cleaning his church. He is setting us free from lies, religions, lies of the monkey, lies that we have believed, lies that we've catered to, lies that we've protected because our flesh wanted it. Why do you get stuck in the flesh in some area? Because it feels good. Your flesh likes it. But you don't know it's killing you. It's destroying your life. The enemy came to kill, steal, and destroy. So he attacks you in your flesh. He attacks you in your mind. If you get attacked in the same area over and over and over and over and over again, then you have got something that you need to change in your outlook, stand up, make a stand, start being tough, kick the monkey out, do something. If you need healing in your body, please come up right now. If you're all half, half just strong as you're all like Wonder Woman and that's praise God you've received your healing if there's any spiritual strongholds in your life that you want to be free of maybe there's something that's tormented you this week maybe there's something that you haven't been able to get a handle on come on up Miss Kimmy, my favorite little lioness. I need, I'm up here for healing. I got chills, my throat was hurting yesterday, and I was, I got chills last night. Okay. And I was standing against the enemy and listening to the word like the Lord would have me to, but my stomach is still kind of in knots and still have a lot of uh, congestion. Stand over here. 
Oh no, she's, that's right. <laughs> Heather's gonna move over. Heather, here, come here, come here. Come here. We're, yes. I've always said we're a teaching church. Okay? So Kimmy, I want you to stand over here. I want you to take this paw and put it right here. Okay? Now, does God live in you? Yes. Okay. Do you have faith for healing? Okay. I want you to curse the enemy. I curse every life of the enemy. Inflammation. Inflammation. Sickness. Sickness. And I command those demons to come out now in Jesus' name. And I command those demons to come out right now in Jesus' name. I release the fire of God to burn out all their residue. I release the fire of God to burn out all the residue. And I release the healing anointing. And I release the healing anointing. To restore everything in my sister's throat. To restore lungs, everything in my sister's throat and her lungs. And to be totally free of all the residue of the enemy. And to be totally free of all the residue of the enemy. No, I want you to say that. Oh, I believe it. And I, I receive it. it. And I receive it. So you're healed. Amen. So Amen. when the when the when the symptom comes, mm -hmm. you go, oh no, talk to the hand. I don't receive that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Hi. I know you're somebody's mom. Teresa. Ah. This is my daughter. Big girl's mom. How are you? I need some well, I, ha I have uh, arthritis, and I have a pain right here, and inflammation, and sleep apnea. Okay. First thing I want you to do is we're going to change our talking. Okay. I do not receive arthritis. I don't receive arthritis. It's not mine. It's not mine. And I don't want it. And I don't want it. Okay. No. <clears throat> I want you to I want you to just just gonna say I, I renounce. I renounce. All pain. All pain. All declarations from doctors. All declarations from doctors. All symptoms. All symptoms. All systems. All systems. All symptoms. Okay. In the name of Jesus, I detach you. From those things that you renounce and every demonic spirit that has attached itself to you I'm going to command to come out at the count of three ready one two three out and I release the fire of God right into your back to take away that pain I command all inflammation in your joints to leave right now in Jesus name and you are free and that lying enemy must come out of you right now. Out. Out. Tell me what you're feeling right now. I feel, I don't feel no pain anymore. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That monkey tries to come back. The minute you feel anything, you say no. Yes. That's not mine. Amen. Get out of here. You Amen. speak to it loud in your voice. No, I don't receive that. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> You're free. Amen. <laughs> yes. Hi. How are you? Amazing. Um, so the legalism's gone. And it started off with that. It started okay. off with God took the fear because I woke up every day in condemnation for all my life. And uh, and then it was, of course, I was drug addict. So then there was a lot of guilt and shame. And he completely took it away. Like it was mind blowing because that condemnation kept me in my room and I couldn't leave for months. I and my bipolar was so bad, bipolar one. But you know what? I'm not manic anymore. Where did it go? Like, I'm not high or I'm not low. I'm like, dang, he's steady. I'm not taking it personal. And you know, people at school have been doing presentations on Jesus wow. and they've been calling me like, you know, Teresa, and I'm able to pray with them. I'm able to like talk about Jesus with them, and they're like so grateful. And they call me all the time. And so the devil, with all this greatness and this 
immense joy that's going on in my life, but it's just like a very happy life, content. Yeah. It's, I never, what is that? I've never been normal my whole life. I feel normal. So, everything that you went through and experienced was the byproduct of an attack from the enemy. Right. And it could go all the way back to childhood. It could be generational. So not, it, does, it wasn't necessarily something you did. It was something that came on you. Mm -hmm. Things happened to you when you were little. Yeah. Things happened to you when you were a young girl. Mm -hmm. That wasn't your fault. But the enemy came in and latched on it. Mm -hmm. And so the, the drugs and everything was you trying to self-medicate. Because mm -hmm. I can't deal with what happened to me. I can't deal with... And then you go down this road and you wake up and say, Did I do that and that and that and that? You have to look over and say, oh, look, that person's dead and buried right there. Mm -hmm. You have been separated from that person. Amen. You're new. Yes. 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 Now, the Lord wants to do something else for you right now. Was there something you came up for prayer or just a testimony? Um, well, the devil's been attacking me because I stopped going to AA, and I was talking about Jesus in AA. Jesus set me free. I kept saying, Jesus, Jesus. And Amen. some people, they kicked me out, yeah. and I came back, and I oh. kept saying it. Jesus, I'm like, I, and I would just say Jesus, and I'm like, that's it, that's all I have to say, you know, and uh, so a lot of people got offended, but I didn't take to offense, Amen. because there was some people that wanted to read the word, I yep. would go there on purpose to take my Bible and just sit there for hours, and people would read the word yep. with me, and they got offended, but uh, the people that are, and my friends, my three good friends, they're back in math right now. Yeah, they're going to go back. Mm -hmm. A has about a three to four percent success rate. Yes. Yeah. Lord wants to do something for you today. Hmm. He's going to loosen something right there. Yeah. Amen. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> it's going to leave right now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I want to put my hands on the side of your jaw. Is that all right? Yes. Okay. I want you to renounce. I want you to renounce. I want you to renounce. I renounce all the drugs I ever took. I renounce all the drugs I ever took. And all the byproduct. And all the byproducts of those drugs. Of those drugs. And I declare that I am free. And I declare that I am free. In Jesus' name, I detach you from all the spirits that came on you that have affected you physically. I command all of them to leave. And I command the healing into your jaw, your jawbone, your muscles, that everything is made new right now. Amen. In Jesus' name, I release the fire. Just be set free right now. Those jaw, it's just being made new. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. No, no, just leave it there. I really want to bring it up. Oh, you stubborn, strong. <laughs> crevices that I would have never looked, but the Holy Spirit was like, look in this drawer. I found an old, I found an old card from an ex-boyfriend who we were engaged. Found it. I'm like, I didn't know I had this. Look in the closet. I found um, professional photographs of a very toxic relationship I was in for four years. And now, um, I didn't know that was in that closet. Um, the Holy Spirit just led me through my whole house all day. It was really fun and exciting and victorious. And um, I want, I want, the Holy Spirit wants me to tell you a few things that are really important that I brought. Um, my aunt's ashes, my aunt was into Eastern religion and was a witch who received Christ on her deathbed, thank, thank the Lord. But I've had her ashes because no one wanted them and I felt like, oh, I felt sorry for her so I had them for the last three years, but um, I'm bringing them. Um, I also have um, a lot of corks. I have a lot of corks from all the alcohol I drank when I was an alcohol holic, and they were decorative pieces in my house <laughs> as of yesterday. I remember those days. Right? So those were sitting in my kitchen in plain sight and plain view, and I didn't realize, like, maybe I should get rid of those. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So also, these are um, all my awards from my current job for years of service and outstanding performance, and the only person who I want to please is the Lord. I Woo! Hallelujah! Thank you. This is a good one. You're going to 
love this one. I hope so. This is like um, Alcoholics Big Book of an uh, Alcoholics Anonymous uh, Big Book. Their Bible. Um, yeah, their Bible. Um, here's your 12 steps. And um, these are all my Celebrate Recovery workbooks. Wow. Um, and to me, it reminds me of Nimrod. Oh. Um, building a ladder to God. Yes. And um, God says, all you need is me. That's right. And my Bible and deliverance. Amen. And Amen. The, the two men who originally started AA were two Christian men. Yeah. And it has been tweaked it from has. here I had to research. way yeah. over here I to agree. really kind of a new age. Yeah. Um, if I have the right mindset, I can be free of this and I'm going to fix myself and all that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to tell you how right on you are by telling you what God had me do before we got married. I had two portraits of two women I used to know from a boy. Ooh. Go through your photo album and take every picture of every Fifi out. Throw away all your science fiction and fantasy books. Mm -hmm. Your plaques you got from your All job. my plaques for being sales of the week, sales of the month, sales of the year. Wow. Big wooden brass, you know, fancy things. I threw all that away. Amen. She came over to clean my apartment before we got married. I was going to leave my apartment and go back and live with my parents for two or three weeks before we got married. What did she find in the top cabinet? A crack pipe. <laughs> She's going, Larry, what is this? And I went, oh, man, throw that away. That's a... So part of the process was cleaning out the crap. Yeah. And I did that unknowingly. I didn't know what I was doing. I just heard the Lord say, do this, do this, do this, and I did it. And that's before we got married. Mm -hmm. None of my furniture... It went into her house. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that's a sleigh bed from Chicago. Yeah, a lot of them out the door. So it's it's distancing yourself and disconnecting yourself from the past. Yeah. Okay. I also have um. This is funny. <laughs> I have a, a, a spy here um, pen where I didn't trust my boyfriend, so I would like use this pen to like listen in, and to me it's like. Could you be in the wrong relationship if you don't trust them that much? It's so fun. So I was every man I've ever been with, I never trusted them because they weren't from the Lord. So you had the gift of suspicion. Yeah. Okay. But I totally agree with that. The only man I want in my life for the first time in my life is Jesus. Amen. So I think that's funny. And then I have self-help books, and one of them I think is a funny name. The name of the book is From Bondage to Bonding. And I think it's so wow. funny because I've been delivered from bondage. Amen. From Pastor Heather and from you, Apostle Larry. Thank you. I've been delivered Thank from you, all God. bondage. Thank you, God. Spirit of rejection. Spirit of abandonment. Generational curses, witchcraft. Amen. So How do you feel? I feel amazing. I'm so, I'm just My. like, whew. Hallelujah. Um, and then I have um, I have depression, anti-depression medicine in there that I had for years in my cabinet, but I wasn't just really, in case. Just in case. Yeah, I, just in case. I've had that medicine. Too. And I don't need it. No, no. <laughs> no. I don't need it. I have the joy of the stand Lord. Over here. I want you to stand right here. Yeah, that's everything. Stand right here. Come here. Come here. Stand okay. right here. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Detach her from all that. Oh, one more thing. My bachelor's degree is in there, too. My, my diploma from my, my college, UC San Diego, it's meaningless. Because the only, the only diploma I want is when I get there and they tell me, look at that book that you were supposed to do. And from 50 years old to 120 years old, I'm going to get it all done. <laughs> the parallels are amazing. Uh, me and Heather went to four years of Bible college. And we took two classes from a legitimate college on the East Coast, we would get a, whatever it is, whatever four-year degree is, in biblical studies. The Lord says, why do you need that? That's to impress men. So I never did it. I never did. I have no sheepskin in my office saying anything about me. I renounce anything that, I, I renounce caring about the judgments of anyone on this planet. I only care about my Father in Heaven and how He looks upon me. I only want to 
want to be obedient to him and pleasing to him. And I want to fulfill my purpose on this earth and the kingdom of God. That's all I want. Okay. In Jesus' name. There is going to be a plethora of weddings in this church in the years to come. And they will be men who look at the women and go, wow, she is so anointed and godly. The woo-woo will be there, but that's not, woo-woo is fleeting. Here today and gone tomorrow. It's the guy who goes and buys a new car and the next year he goes, oh wow, look, they have a new model. You don't want that guy. You want the guy who looks and says, man, I could drive that car for the rest of my life. I like that car. That's a fancy car. So there's going to be a plethora of weddings in the church. You can set those down, girls. <clears throat> just, just set it down. You're fine. <laughs> he is detaching you from crap. Amen. So you don't take crap into your next season of life. So don't look. Don't advertise. Don't be on the lookout. It's going to jump at It's going to come in and slap you in the head, and you're going to go, wow, where did that come from? It's going to be shocking to you. But it'll be everything that you desire. And it'll be under a whole new canopy. I want you to renounce everything that you brought in. Just say, I renounce all the things that tied me to the past. I renounce all the things that tied me to the past. They are no longer my identity. They are no longer my identity. And I release them. And I release them. Okay. In the name of Jesus, I detach you from everything that you've renounced. And I command every and all spirits still attached to you, tied to any of those things that you were renouncing, to come off of you now at the count of three. One, two, three, out. And I just release the fire of God to burn out all the residue, to cleanse her mind, to open her eyes, to give her the mind of Christ, and to restore her to the daughter you've always wanted her to be Hallelujah. right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I just release Hallelujah. this anointing right into Hallelujah. you right now. Hallelujah. Receive it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, you can throw the devil's works away. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Robin, how are you doing? Robin. So great and grateful. See, I'm going to start singing so in church. I don't know what to say. That's a hard one to come after. But I do have something very important to say to the both of you. Thank you for being so kind. You are the most honored couple I have ever met in my life. And your walk with the Lord is such a beautiful example for me and for all of us to see and to follow. And I want to say that I trust both of you. And I honor both of you. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Well, and now, on another note, um, well, I'm glad to be one of your sheep. <laughs> <laughs> and I thank you for all the deliverance and all of the keys that you've given me and all that you've taught me and the whole new me which is emerging and emerged and emerging yet and I just want to say thank you and thank you for all that you've taught me and given me and now I have a, a, a situation I have a situation um, I just found this morning that uh, my mom's precious sister beautiful German artist and creative loving other mother kind of person to me just passed away this morning. So I just pray that I can share those keys that I've learned here with my family. And the God has shown me how with the extended family. And then he says, as for me and our house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. And I, I claim that I will take it now to my Jerusalem, to my family, that they can all be saved on both sides. 
I'm just not sure how to do it. I'm just want to submit. <clears throat> The Lord's going to give you two things today, Robin. Two things. He's going to release an evangelistic anointing on you. You have a quirky personality that God can use yes. to bring the gospel. And all the pain and all the frustration of a past one, it, uh, any sorrow is going to be short and sweet. It's going to be short and sweet for everybody in your family. Someone just, I want you to lay back, Robin. I'm going to cover you up right now. I want you to just let the Lord talk to you, okay? He's going to give you wisdom on how to speak to your family members without cramming it down their throat, okay? Amen. 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 God said I'm particularly fond of this one. And she does make me laugh a lot. I gave her a quirky personality because I have a quirky assignment for her. You can't be wishy-washy. You can't be milly-mally. There's a time that you charge in and speak the truth. And he's given you that calling and that anointing. So just let it flow. <clears throat> Lord says there's absolutely nothing wrong with you. He says there's nothing wrong. He says quit listening to the liar. You have spent a lifetime listening to the lies of the enemy who said you're unworthy, you're not good enough, you're not a prize, you're not valuable, you're just kind of a desperate woman out there. And so you became a desperate woman. The Lord says, I made you precious. I made you valuable. Yes. The right one will look and say, I have found a diamond. Yes. And I want it to be my diamond. Yes. But the Lord says, right now you need to renew your mind and let me Clean out all the the junk in the trunk. Let him work on you. But stop listening to the lies of the enemy. In Jesus' name, I command these ears to close up to anything the enemy says. That's right. And it will no longer be tolerated. It will no longer be received. It will no longer find place in my life. And I just release the truth of the Lord into you that he would manifest his joy, his happiness. And has planned to you from this day forward. And you will be a happy person. Worrying about nothing in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Amen. I don't want you to stand up. I don't want you to stand up. How can I help you? By the way, the Lord is really proud of you today. Because you know this is a lot of pushback. There's a lot of monkey pushback. It's not you, it's the monkey. So when you discern, it's an outside voice, and it's not your heart, you'll be right in the boat. But the Lord's very happy you're here. Yes, sister. Um, I just felt a really overwhelming desire to sort of repent and renounce all the times I didn't believe in my husband. I acknowledge he has been a good husband, a good provider, and and he's been really all around good to me. Go in my office and get my. Uh, and I love him, and I acknowledge him. He's a wonderful, anointed man of God with a great calling on his life. God says, I, I don't care about that. He does. Tell him. I love you. I believe in you. You are my husband, chosen for me, anointed vessel of God, great. 
a wonderful provider and you've always been so good to me. Always been a servant to me. <coughs> Forgive me when I was suspicious of you. I didn't believe in you. Mario's looking for the show of our office. Where is it? It's in the corner. Praise God. I love you. We have a great future together. And I renounce every time I threatened you with the D word because I couldn't manipulate you. Repent of that. I repent of that. I repent. Throw that word down. I flush the D word down the toilet. It doesn't exist between us because we were chosen and handpicked to be together for great works of, for God. We have a ministry together, and I know that. And God's going to have his way in us. Praise and God. I acknowledge you. You're beautiful. You're wonderful. You're anointed. You're handsome. You're loving. You're kind. You're genuine. You're chosen. I'm proud of you. Oh. Okay, I think you can con continue this conversation at home. Being in a, re a relationship is very bizarre. There were times that I wanted to just send her to the moon. Alice. <laughs> And then there are times that I go, how in the world have I ever, how could I have ever made it this far without him? How could I have gotten free from the things I've gotten free without my heaven? So it's a growing process and God is very um, patient. But remember, we do not fight against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. So if Heather says something and I get an offense, it's not Heather, it's the monkey on me. If I then respond in an unkind way, it's not really me, it's the monkey and me. I can tell now, he just starts talking crap. Oh, she's always that way. Whenever I hear always, you're always, that's, uh, I know there's a monkey <coughs> talking, talking to me. And I'm not going to tolerate that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Without saying anything out loud, if there's anything on your heart for yourself, a loved one, a family member, freedom, deliverance, salvation, I want you to say it to the Lord right now, quietly, not out loud. And we're going to seal that declaration. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to add intermission really quick. If you're sewing today, there's envelopes on your chair. When we're done with this, as ever the Lord leads you, bring it up. We will blow the shofar over your offering, Amen. your gifts. Amen. Those who are online, if you have something... You want to bring before the Lord, you tell him what it is, and we're going to seal it with a victory shout. <clears throat> Amen? Amen. Are we ready? Yes. yes. Are we receivers? Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Declare grace, freedom, favor over all those who are here, all those who are watching online, over our sister church in Pakistan, that the grace of God permeates, covers them, invades every area of their life. All those sowing today online or in the house, we bless them. 
We command their offering to multiply Hallelujah. to the church and multiply Hallelujah. back to them a 30, 60, 100 fold Hallelujah. return. Yes. And we declare today that we are victorious yes. in Christ yes. Jesus. Yes. And the church said, yes. 